So for those who don't know us, uh, I'm Jerry, this is Vladimir, and we came here tonight uh, to talk about how to make your prompt great again. So what makes the uh, command prompt great? F by my opinion, I think it, it must provide some useful information, it must uh, look kind of nice, and it must be fast. And as you probably know, uh, there is uh, quite a few uh, shell uh, frameworks which you can uh, nowadays use, which uh, make your shell look nice. It adds some uh, new features which are not by default in the shell. But unfortunately, all this is written in a shell, which makes it to run slow. So how to make it run faster? Well, one of the options is to write it in Go, right? Because Go is compiled language, it's new, it's very trendy, and basically, if you don't write your new project in Go, it's like it wouldn't exist, right? So, we would like to introduce you GBT, yeah? So, what's GBT? Well, please, don't confuse it with LGBT, that's something else, yeah? You can ask Mr. Trump what it is, but uh, we're gonna talk about GBT, which stands for Go bullet train. And it's a basically highly configurable prompt builder, builder for Bash and ZSH, written in Go. Uh, the look of it is inspired by a bullet train team from oh my ZSH framework. And this is how it looks. So it's really like the team you probably know. But we call this one, like the whole thing, train. And as you probably know, each train is composed of cars. So we have several cars in the train. The, train. the cars are separated by separator. And each of the car can have uh, several fields which are further configurable. So for example, the host name car uh, has uh, other fields like user host and in, uh, the two together is host, uh, user host field. So currently, the GBT has uh, 10 cars. So it, it, here's the list. And uh, all cars together uh, can be configured uh, through over 200 uh, uh, environment variables. And as you could see, uh, the prompt is using uh, kind of like special characters. So for this, you have to use uh, nerd fonts. We provide uh, GBT packaged for uh, three major uh, platforms, Linux, uh, or maybe two, Linux, Mac, and Android. Uh, so there are packages like RPM, uh, Debian, for Arch Linux, there's uh, package in our repository. For Mac, we're using Brew. And on Android, you can get it uh, installed on your uh, mobile phone through application called Thermux. So the Thermox application is very interesting because it's basically a shell. And so you install the, the application plus some styling package, which is, by the way, paid. The Thermox is not paid, but the styling package is paid. It's like 170 something uh, pound. Um, but uh, the styling package is needed for the fonts. Yeah? So once you get this one installed, you set the font, then you install the GBT with two commands, and you activate it with the third command, which you can see here. So then you can have uh, the GBT running even on your uh, mobile phone. Now, uh, because I think it's, there's nothing more uh, boring than uh, watch me typing, so we pre-recorded uh, all this typing into an uh, animated <laughs> GIF. <laughs> so, I will pause it and comment a little bit. So here it goes. So here you see me typing the commands. It wasn't me, it was a program. So basically, here I'm demoing the status uh, uh, car, which is by default not visible, and it shows only when there is a command returning non-zero uh, return code. So when I type force and hit enter, the uh, uh, status car uh, shows up. You can also configure it to not only to show that there is an error, but you can also show the uh, status code itself. On the next demo is the OS car. So basically, in the, in the front of the car, you can see that uh, it can have different icons. By default, 
You can fake it like this with the commands, but by default, the icon is chosen based on the OS you, you run the GBT on, right? So on Mac, you get Mac icon, on Ubuntu, you get Ubuntu icon, and so on. Uh, on the next demo, there is the host name car, which uh, shows your username, the host name. You can configure it, as I said. You can have only the username, only the host name, or you can change the color of each of the field. It's fully configurable. You can configure it as you wish. On the next demo, there is a demo of the directory car. So basically, as you walk through directories, you can uh, see that the um, directory car is changing its content. You can uh, tweak it a little bit, so it doesn't have to show only the last bit of the part, but you can say, OK, show me only the last three. Or if you set it to some really big number, then it will show always the, the full, full part, right? Uh, on the next demo, is the sign car, which is the last car in the in the in the train, which is the dollar or the hash if you switch to you uh, to root, right? And the next demo is the time car. So basically, you can keep adding uh, different cars into your train. So for example, here I will just pause it. So on the second line, you can see that I de defined a GBT cars environment, environment, environment variable and just put the time car in there. And that activates actually the time car, right? And then you can configure it further, like changing colors, changing format of the time displayed, and, and so on and so on. Yeah. On the next demo, we're showing the exact time car demo. It's a very interesting uh, car because it shows you how long each command you type was running. Yeah? So this is actually using some uh, shell which you need to source to activate this uh, functionality. And the, the, the uh, shell script basically just measures the time and uh, expose it through environment variable. And then GBT reads the environment variable, formats it, and displays it to you as a, a special car, right? So if you, if you run something like five seconds, you see five seconds, otherwise you, and you can specify like the, the precision of it. So if you have some really uh, quick commands, then you can see even how many milliseconds it was running. On the next demo, we show the <coughs> Git car. Of course, we have integration with Git. So as soon as you enter some Git directory, the Git car shows up and shows you the, the, uh, ma the, the branch name, whether the um, uh, Git uh, is uh, dirty or it's not dirty. That means if there is new file or some changes, then it shows you the cross or the, the, the green tick. Uh, when you change uh, uh, to a tag, it shows you tag instead of the branch. And if you uh, change to detached branch, then uh, it uh, shows you the commit name. If you do some change, then uh, change, then it shows you whether you should like pull it, pull uh, uh, the code in from the remote uh, branch or push it up. Or if you uh, just uh, divert from whatever is on the remote and it shows you like, I don't know what to do, do whatever you like. <laughs> and so that's the Git car. Next is a Python virtual environment car. So again, as soon as you uh, activate uh, the car by adding it into the list of cars, and as soon as you activate the vir uh, virtual environment, the uh, car will show up and sh show you the name of the virtual environment. And on the next demo, we can see a custom car, this is a, which is a very special car because it allows you to define a command and you can take the output of the command and show it in the car, right? So basically, here I'm uh, getting a load average and just showing it there. But it can be like 
uh, how many messages I have in my mailbox and so on and so on. Yeah? So it's on your imagination. And again, you can change the <coughs> color of, 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 of the thing, the background, the foreground color. You can make it bold, you can make it blinking, you can make it under, underlined. All this is built in, just define the right variable and you have it. And as there is so many uh, variables you can define, then you can put them in a uh, file and just source all these variables and you can redefine the look of the uh, GBT train completely. Yeah? So here you see that I created like a te team uh, file, just source it and the, the prompt looks completely different. Yeah? So you don't have to have the bullet train, you can have whatever looking prompt you like. And I think that's it. That was the demo. And I was, you know, at the beginning I was talking about the properties what a great prompt should have. So it should, uh, it should provide uh, good information, which I think it provides. It uh, should look, look nice, which kind of it does. And it should be fast. So I was like thinking how to measure how fast it is actually. Is it fa much faster than a uh, normal prompt or is it you know, slower? So I basically created uh, this uh, shell script which does nothing else than just uh, running four git commands and based on the uh, result of the command I populate some variables and then there is one echo command and those variables are printed out there. So it's very very simple, it does nothing else than this and I was running it 100 times and measured that uh, time of run and then uh, run it 10 times. So basically it was running 1000 times and averaging each of the 100 times run, right? So I was running that script uh, in Bash and it was running so fast. I was running it in ZSH and it was running so fast. And then I, I ran GBT producing the same output like the the, the shell script and it's running slightly faster. Yeah? And actually the GBT is doing much more than just printing out. It has all the logic behind and so on and so on. So even so, it runs much, much faster. Right? And you can notice that uh, the CPU load is actually higher on GBT because of probably the uh, built-in Go uh, concurrency. So it runs multiple things in, in, in simultaneously. And that's all from me. And I will hand the uh, uh, stage to Vladimir, who will show you one very, very interesting uh, uh, case f of using GBT. Okay, thank you, Julie. <laughs> so when Julie showed GBT to me, I thought, like, who cares, right? <laughs> <laughs> really, like, you, you can figure it once and never change it again, so it's the same. But so I said, like, okay whatever, and I completely forgot about it. But then I just remember that I really like the icons, OS icons, it's really useful, right? And the colors, he made like really good job picking up everything correctly. So I went to the Git repo, I decided to review, uh, review Git code, uh, Git code uh, because Jiri is dodgy guy and it's like, you need to check everything what he does. Even though it's open source, right? But we all know what open source is. So I checked it in, uh, reviewed the code, and what I really liked is the amount of configuration, uh, configurable options he provides. It's really cool. So then I thought, okay, so it's nice and can be useful for something which I've been doing for like a couple of years but with a plain bash and looks like a good replacement. So the thing is called prompt forwarding. Um, instead of telling you, explaining what it is, I'd better to show. So for the Cool. So for the purpose of this demo, I spin up like three virtual machines uh, with Vagrant, uh, running plain OSs like Debian, Ubuntu, and CentOS. Nothing configured. As you can see, prompt looks like generic, things like this. Nothing special. Okay, so to activate the prompt forwarding, we need to source uh, this kind of configuration file. Nothing special as well. So we create a couple of aliases and we point them to the predefined GPT functions, uh, which we've created. We also define one special alias, which we'll use later, where, with the prefix the GPT3 underscores, so you will see it. And we export the path to the installation folder of GPT. In my case, it was like uh, installed with Brew. 
and we're sourcing the actual configuration for the prompt forwarding. So what happened next? Goes. And this time we try to get into the Vagrant Debian box. Boom! We have exactly the same looking prompt, but already on the remote side, without any installation, without anything done there. What we do next? We go to CentOS. Same thing. We SSH through it, and it's exactly the same. It's awesome. So, but it's not it. Then we can run sudo command, and it will stay the same for any user you like. Okay. Go further to Ubuntu box, same thing. And as you notice, we have the same icons describing what's actually there. sudo root, same thing. And now we can use GPT to the current to configure the prompt for the Docker. The icon changed to the Docker and it looks like this. And you remember the LS which we created with the GPT run this course. We pass it into the Docker container. Boom. So I think this is a very useful feature where you define something on your local machine and you can use any way you want. Then moving forward, we've done a really amazing thing where you can actually configure MySQL prompt with GBT, guys. You switch between databases, it represented state, it shows you time, it shows everything. It's really cool. Okay. Exit, exit. Cool. But obviously not every one of you likes this bullet trains, correct? It's like it's nice, but I don't, I don't really like it. <laughs> I mean, I'm honest. And uh, usually when you use it, like if you have the same prod on every machine, it can be like really dodgy. You can go to production, delete some file, and they say, oh, oh guys, seriously, do we have any backups? So it's a really good idea to have like different style and everything. That's why we delivered like theming for remote forwarding as prompt forwarding as well. So for that, you just need to pass ex uh, export the environment variable GBT theme and point it to the, your configuration file. You go to Vagrant, CentOS, you have a new theme. You go to Ubuntu, same theme. Shell, same thing. Cool. So I hope you really liked it. So the main question, how does it work, right? It's a magic. I mean, to me, it's a magic. Okay. Everything is simple. Uh, so I'll explain you on one simple thing, like how we pass it over SSH. So obviously we execute SSH to the server, and then we uh, pass the command which we run on the remote side. In this case, it's like echo PS1. As you can, over, as you can see over here, we use a dollar sign to execute something, and in our case, GBT, on our local side before we're SSHing. Uh, the produced output is going to be concatenated into the team PGBT configuration file. And after that, we run bash with a special command rc file where we actually point it to the configuration file we want. That's it. Once we're done, we clean up the file to make sure that your environment is actually clean and there is nothing left over there. So features. You don't require any dependencies for SGBT on the remote side. That's why it can be run in Docker. Okay, the only dependency is bash. For now, it, run, it works only with bash. We also provide you a seamless integration with uh, SSH, Docker, Vigrant, MySQL, support SU and sudo. And we also allow you to forward your analysis to the remote sites without any, like, without not much things from your side. Limitations, only bash, and we don't support the uh, dynamic uh, cars of GBT itself because we use uh, escape sequences provided by bash. Jiri, it's all yours. So, as this is an <clears throat> open source project, you can contribute, right? So, we're looking for people who would like to uh, contribute with uh, teams, who would like to create new cars. Uh, there is some more, like, uh, low-level stuff which you can also contribute with. So, if you want to learn Go, just try contribute, right? Otherwise, you know, spread the word. If you liked what you saw, you think it's good, just tell your friends, start using it, and so on, right? And I think uh, there should be Jared from uh, DevOps Weekly in the room. Is, is he? No, I don't see him. Anyway, I hope that uh, the message will get to him. Uh, maybe he will also you know, help us to advertise the product uh, in his uh, DevOps Weekly. Otherwise, uh, if you liked what you saw, go to this uh, GitHub page and give us a star. Uh, we like stars, right?